Greetings, my fellow gamers. It is I, Wraith King, bringing you news from beyond the mirror, from the other world. And today, we are talking about the Awakened Jippy. Now, before we begin, I have to tell you she is very fragile, so I would highly recommend bringing a very, very strong defender along with you, most likely Rudy or Evan, because they increase the entire ally team's defense. And most likely Rudy, because he increases allies team's defense by 60%. Unlike Evan, who increases the allies team by 50%. So I would highly recommend bringing one of the two along with you. But my strongest recommendation is Rudy because he increases your physical, uh, your total defense by 60%. And that's a lot. So I would highly recommend at least Rudy. Uh, but... <laughs> I'm ready to take my aim. Why is she so fragile? Most fighters come with a void shield, right? She does not have one. So I would highly recommend bringing max HP... Uh, in your weapon, in your uh, weapon build, so I would highly, highly recommend that. And as for what kind of weapons to bring with her, I know it says it's hack speed for recommendation, but I just don't think so. Because if you're going to have a, a, a fighter or a mage without a void shield, let's just take a look at her uh, max HP for a minute. That's not very high. Going up to 40 plus 10. This isn't very high. This Her max HP in defense is not very high. So what you want to do is make sure you bring attack speed, but at the same time, you don't want people to counter her a whole bunch of times because, like, say she attacks, I don't know, um, a Shane, like, in this, uh, like, a bunch of times because she's really fast. Shane has a void shield. She doesn't. So if she attacks Shane twice in the same turn, Shane's going to counter her, right? That's gonna kill her. Like, like straight up, that's gonna kill her. If that Shane has some good items on her, that Shane's gonna kill her. So, I would highly recommend building max HP with her and not building uh, too much attack speed. I mean, build a little bit of attack speed, but if you get at least one attack speed item, make sure you make make sure the second item is not an attack speed item. Uh, like a critical rate is what I would highly recommend for her second item in the attack slot. But anyways. Let's take a look at her active ability. Her first one. It in multi shot inflicts 300% physical damage on one enemy. I'm sorry if I'm stammering a little bit. I am very, very tired. I, I just want to point that out right, right away. If I'm stammering any more through the video, I'm very, very sorry about that. I seriously apologize. I am very tired. But anyways, um, let's take a look at her second ability. Sniping Snatch. Most of you are probably already used to what Jippy actually does. Her abilities aren't exactly different from what they used to be. They're simple upgrades. Um, what this does is it greatly increases lethal attack and critical rate for three turns and becomes an active skill during the duration. This active skill is very, very powerful, but it's a single target. It doesn't do, uh, doesn't do anything to anyone else but the one target. So she is probably best for raid or castle rush if you're going or if you are going to use her if you're going to max her out to level 40 plus 10 probably she'd be best used in raid and in castle rush but bringing her along in arena and things like that probably wouldn't be such a good idea because there are a lot of aoe attacks and she's going to get killed very quickly by those aoe attacks because of her lack of void shield but oh and this by the way this applies to multi-shot and snipe as well this ability it applies to multi-shot and snipe. Now, as for her awakening skill, this kind of helps her out a little bit, helps the fact that she is fragile and kind of gives her a void shield. But be be cautious because I don't think this um, void shield is strong enough to withstand a double penetration. So I don't think um, she is strong enough to withstand a deadly strike from De Delans. So if you are going to have her put her in the back even though this awakening skill does grant her a um, physical damage void shield for four turns and since it's physical damage i would definitely put her put her in her back this void shield only is immune to physical damage meaning if somebody has any mage at all on their in on the enemy team she can die very quickly and that void shield will not protect you from the damage coming from those mages so definitely put her in the back and bring someone along with you that has some serious defensive increases. Not only does this give her a void shield for four turns, 
but it also increases her physical attack by 100% for only 10 hits though, so keep that in mind. This also applies to counter attack and attack speed and stacks with normal physical attack increase effects. But keep this in mind, her void shield can be pierced, so I would definitely recommend keeping her in the rear if you were going to add her in an arena. But saying that, um, it still is a 4 turn void shield and it does protect her from physical attack. There aren't too many heroes right now that deal high magic damage or any magic damage at all of that because they've been releasing a lot of physical based characters. But Yuri was still recently released so expect to see her often. So definitely keep her in the rear if you're going to have her on your team in arena. <coughs> So yeah, nothing too different with her basic attacks. Let's take a look at these. Because light has a butterfly. All right, not bad. It seems like it's the same thing as it was before. Unfortunately, I can't show you what this ability looks like. This the uh, this the active skill that that turns into. Uh, it it looks the same though. So there's nothing really new there with that skill. As I said before, most of, all of her skills are the same. They look exactly the same as they did before. The only difference, the only real new animation here is the awakening. Wind that divides both earth and sky. Lend me strength. Now, this ability looks really awesome. By the way, it's it's awesome. It's really cool. The butterfly wings and everything. It's 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 beautiful. But, as I said before, keep her in the rear. Be sure to keep her in the rear if you're going to add her in Arena, even though I would highly not recommend that. But you're probably going to do it anyways. If you are going to add her in Arena, be sure to put her in the back because she could get devastated if she's up front. But I'm pretty sure most of you already know that. Uh, but anyways, that's the review for the new character. But before I end off my uh, video, as always, I like to take a look at the passive flash because it's the most important part. Eyes of a Hawk increases physical attack by 80% and increases the lethal attack rate of all allies by 50%. Now, the increase in physical attack applies to herself and the lethal attack increase applies to all allies, not the uh, increase in 80% attack that's only applied to her, so keep that in mind. But yeah, she doesn't have a void shield. That can be a little bit of a problem. So that's why I don't want her, want you, want you guys to use her in arena because a character without a void shield can die fast. And since she can't revive, that's a problem. So you want to have a character that can increase physical defense, total defense in general, all your team, all allies, which would most likely be Rudy or Evan. So I would highly recommend bringing defenders like them along with you if you plan on ha having her in um, in Arena, which, uh, again, I would not recommend. But if you want to, that's who I would bring with you, who I would recommend bringing with you. But yeah, uh, that's the Awakened Jippy. But before I end my video, I do this all the time. I'm just going to check that they did not add anybody else. And it doesn't look like they did. No, they didn't, it doesn't look like they added any. Did they add any special heroes? No. Nope. So, okay, I like to do that every time. I'm very sorry because sometimes Seven Knights has the habit of releasing two new characters. And I make a video on one and I didn't check. And that's kind of my fault though because I don't check. Sometimes I'm just so excited, like, ooh, new Awakened character. Oh, well, let's, I'm going to review them right away, and I don't look for other new characters. So I kind of blame myself for that. But from now on, I am definitely going to look. I am definitely going to look. But anyways, that's all the time I have left for this review. I review all the characters, and I make recommendations for weapons. I think I should do that a little more often. Make recommendations for weapon builds and armor builds for all these new characters, because... When they release these new characters, they are very different. Sometimes they can be very different from what they are on the Korean version. And then that can be 
a little bit of a problem for some of the Korean perversion players. They don't exactly know what to do with these do with them because they're so different. They're new. They've nerfed them. They've changed a lot of things with them. So that means different items, different different techniques. And so I'm probably going to make recommendations for weapons and armor more often at the end of these hero reviews. But anyways, that's all the time I got. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I make videos like this all the time. Take it easy for me, alright? Bye.